Let's make a hammered dulcimer and a charango preset. You can download these presets along with over 175 other presets in my pack called Sounds You Know. A link for that's in the description. So first we're going to make the hammer dulcimer sound. So initialize a preset, turn off oscillator 1, turn on the sample, we're going to be using white noise, randomize the start position so that it emulates the natural variability of an acoustic instrument, then turn on filter 1, let's go to comb, spread flange plus, Turn up the resonance all the way, turn up key tracking all the way, turn down cut, bring the blend all the way to the middle, and then route in the sample. So now the comb filter is cutting out anything that's not in the harmonic series of whatever our cutoff point is, and our cutoff is following whatever note we play because key tracking is up 100%. So now let's control the volume of the white noise. Let's lower the level all the way and use envelope two to control that amplitude. So for this one, I'm gonna set the decay to 0.5 for both the decay and the release. Then I'm gonna turn down the sustain about halfway and then I'm gonna match these curves. I'm gonna pull these down to make this more steep. I'm going to pull these down all the way, almost all the way. Then turn down sustain and drag over envelope 2 to the level of white noise. So now it's starting to sound more like a string pluck. Now I want to emulate uh, the sound of a hammered dulcimer and later on a charango. And the thing that these instruments have in common, other than both being stringed instruments, is they both have two string courses. Now a course is a group of stringed uh, strings tuned to the same frequency and they're usually played at the same time. Uh, the most common example being a piano which has three string courses. If you ever look inside of a piano you'll notice that the hammers aren't just striking one string but they're striking three. And then when that piano goes out of tune those strings aren't in tune with one another and you get kind of an abrasive sound uh, reminiscent of like a saloon piano. So we're going to try to emulate that in Vital and in order to do that I'm going to use the stereo parameter here. Now I'm going to hold shift and drag that over to the cutoff of my filter and I'm going to reduce that to 0 0.2 so 20 cents of variability and now in my left ear I have uh, a signal that's out of tune with the signal in my right ear but I want it to sound like it's coming from one source, so I'm gonna lower the spread all the way. Now it's in mono. Now, something that might not really happen naturally, but I think sounds good, is modulating that amount of detune with an envelope. So I'm gonna use envelope three for this. I'm gonna turn the sustain all the way down, and then I'm gonna set the decay to 8.5 for both the decay and the release. Now I'm going to pull down this thing right here, make it a little bit steeper, and I'm going to adjust the uh, release one as well. Now I'm going to use this to adjust uh, the amount of detune, and then I'm going to adjust that amount with macro 1. So now I'm in control of how much detune there is. So I'm going to label this macro detune, and now at 0 we'll get no detune. And here's full detune. Now I think this sound sounds best at about 0.42. So the sound is pretty bright and I'm going to tame that a little bit with uh, filter 2. And for this one I'm going to be using a digital uh, 24 dB filter. And it's digital so that it's cleaner I don't get as much distortion from the filter. Now make sure you're routing in filter 1. Turn down the resonance all the way. And what we're going to do with this, we're going to turn it from a uh, high-pass filter to a band-pass filter with an envelope. 
Uh, so for this one, I'm going to use envelope 3. And so I'm going to drag over envelope 3 to the blend here. Then I'm going to right click on that modulation amount. I'm going to set this to 0 0.582. Now we're losing a little bit of volume. I'm going to bring that back in. So now it's sustaining for quite a long time. So I'm going to use envelope one to control the resonance of our filters. So I'm going to turn down the sustain halfway for this one. I'm going to set the decay to 1.7. And then I'm going to set the release to 0.7. Now, if you wanted this to behave more like a real hammer dulcimer, you'd probably want to match the release to the decay time. Uh, but I wanted it to be more practical. Um, if the release is the same as the decay time, it doesn't matter how long you hold the note. There, it's always going to decay the same amount. Uh, but I want to be able to mute the note when I let go of the note, uh, similarly to how it happens on a piano. Or a keyboard instrument. And then I could use a sustain pedal if I wanted it to keep ringing out. So I'm going to match these curves. I'm just going to pull them down a little bit. And then I'm going to decrease the sustain all the way. So now it's going to be quite a bit shorter. But that's okay because I'm going to decrease, excuse me, increase that decay time uh, with velocity. Um, so before I do that, I'm going to use envelope 3 to control one more thing. So I'm going to use envelope 3 to control the cut of filter 1, and this is very subtle. So I'm going to drag that over, and I'm going to set this to 4. And this cut basically sets the frequency of um, whatever the loudest harmonic is. So you can see there's kind of the little bell curve. Um, if I set this to about 19, then you'll see that that third harmonic is now the loudest, since the third harmonic is at plus 19 semitones. So I'm going to put that back, and we're just going to modulate it slightly with envelope 3. Now let's introduce some velocity controls. So the first thing I'm going to control with velocity is the blend of filter 1. So I'm going to drag that over, and the blend here is basically just going to increase the amplitude of our higher harmonics, making it sound brighter. And now I'm going to decrease that modulation amount to 0 0.6. And I'm also going to use this velocity control to increase the decay time of uh, envelope 1. So I'm going to drag that over. And then I'm going to set this to 0 0.25. So now when I hit the keyboard harder, the notes are longer. So I'm not done with the velocity controls yet. I'm also going to use uh, velocity to control the modulation amount of the filter 2's blend. So as you may recall, envelope 3 is controlling the blend of our filter, turning it into more of a high pass filter. So now if I introduce velocity to that modulation amount, it's dependent on velocity. So now higher velocities will be brighter. There will be more of a uh, high pass filter as opposed to lower velocities, which will be closer to this band pass. So now I can introduce a macro uh, to those velocity controls. I can drag this over to those modulation amounts. And now I can control how much velocity affects our sound. So at zero, uh, it'll just be basically the same as zero velocity, regardless of how hard I press a key. And if I put it back to one, it's where it was before. And I can just take the edge off. And uh, it's really helpful for when you're playing, you can really dial in uh, what you want the timbre to be. So I'm gonna call this velocity range. Now another thing I want to do is add a macro for muting, and I really think this makes this preset um, stand out among some of its alternatives. With a sample library, you only have so many velocities. For this one we have 127, 
Um, and then if you introduce another mechanic like muting, well then they have to sample every velocity for every note with that new uh, parameter. So there probably aren't going to be as enough samples to make it very fluid. But since we're generating the sound with a synthesizer, we can make it very fluid. So in order to do this, I'm going to set macro 3 to the blend of our first comb filter here. And then I'm going to set this modulation amount to negative 0.5. And let's turn this up to hear the difference this is making. You can hear that's dampening the sound quite a bit. Now I'm also going to drag this over to the resonance of that filter and just turn this down a little bit. So negative 0 0.1. And now you just hear a little bit more of the noise and a little bit less of the harmonics. Now I'm also going to use the uh, mute feature here to uh, mess with some of these decay times in our envelopes. So particularly envelope 1, let's drag this over to decay. And let's set this uh, to negative 0 0.2. And then let's drag this over to the release as well. Negative 0 0.15 for this one. You could match them if you went the route of emulating the real hammer dulcimer's behavior. Then I'm also going to edit uh, envelope 3's decay and release, so drag that over there. And let's edit these modulation amounts. So for this one, I'm going to change it to negative 0.4. And then for this one, same thing. So now that's the absolute extreme end here. Now that I'm here, I'm thinking negative uh, 0 0.4 is a little bit much. I'm going to dial it back to about, I don't know, negative 2. That sounds a little bit better to me. And then one last thing with this macro. One side effect of turning down this blend is that uh, the pitch goes down. So we need to compensate for that. So I'm going to drag this over to um, the cutoff here. And then we can edit that amount. So this is macro 3 right here. I'm going to edit that to 0.1, so just 10 cents to offset the difference that that makes. So now I'm going to call this macro mute. And I think that really adds a nice touch and it's especially uh, really useful for the charango preset that we're going to make after this. Uh, you can really get some of those nice um, plucky uh, strum sounds that you would get on a real charango. But for now, let's go to the effects section. Let's put in an EQ. I'm going to use this low shelf here to cut out just some of the very low lows. I'm going to set the cutoff here to 25. And then I'm going to set the resonance to 6. Then I'm going to introduce this little bump here. I'm going to set the gain to 3. And then I'm going to set the cutoff to 60. For this one, resonance at 5. And that's just going to boost a little bit of those uh, low mids uh, that might naturally resonate uh, from the body of a hammer dulcimer. And then we're going to accentuate that a little bit with um, some saturation. So I'm going to uh, bring in this distortion and with the soft clip mode and then set the drive to 5. Now I'm a little bit loud here. I'm going to bring this down. So now that we've done that, we can add in some subtleties. We're almost done with this, <clears throat> excuse me. But I want to show you one really cool trick that Vital has. So if, imagine you're a hammer dulcimer player, uh, you're playing with these little spoons or hammers, whatever they're called, 
and uh, you're alternating probably between your right and left hand. And you might have a tendency with one hand that you have less so in the other. And we can emulate that uh, in our vital preset by using this point cycle mode on an LFO. So I'm gonna use LFO two. It doesn't matter what the tempo is. I'm gonna set the shape to square. And then I'm going to edit the cut of filter one. And I'm only gonna edit it by three because I want a very subtle difference between the two hands. So now check it out when I play repeated notes. Regardless of how fast I play them, every other note um, will get a different modulation. So the first note I play will be pushed up um, in the cut by three semitones here, and then the next one will get plus zero, and then plus three, plus zero, and so forth. It's a really cool trick um, you can do in Vital, and you might use this to edit other parameters. For example, if you have a sample here, uh, you could edit the transposition of that sample just very slightly to get a slightly different timbre, as if you're hitting the string in a slightly different place. Now, one last detail that I want to do, some fine tuning, literally, is tuning this instrument up by uh, adding this note here to the cutoff of filter one. So drag that over, and let's set this to 0 0.45 then it's very important that you go to this matrix here. You can sort by source um, and find where you have your note modulation. Click on this. And I want to, um, I'm gonna play the C above middle C. Right there. Double click right above where that is. And drag it all the way down. And then I'm gonna play this G two octaves above that, or three octaves. Yeah right there, and then drag that up. And that will help with the intonation. And then I'm gonna also gonna edit this, set your Y grid to three here, and then drag this point down to the one third mark. And that should help it be a little bit more in tune in the upper register. And that's it for the Hammer Dulcimer preset. If you wanna add reverb, I recommend doing it outside of Vital. Because uh, remember, we put this in mono, so your reverb would be in mono as well if you put it in the effects. So here it is with uh, a reverb I used outside. If you're going to make it very polyphonic like that, you also probably want to lower the volume here. So now that we've made the hammer dulcimer preset, Let's use some of those same concepts to make a charango. So like a hammer dulcimer, the charango has uh, two string courses. So we can keep this stereo modulation of the cutoff of our filter that gives us some detune. Now there are a few differences. I used a grinder sample here instead of the white noise sample. The grinder sample is in the factory folder that comes with the free version of Vital. And then with most of these envelopes, I, uh, I made them a little bit shorter, particularly the envelope that's controlling the sample level. I set that decay to about 0.1. Uh, and that kind of helps make the string sound a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner, as it would be on a small guitar like a charango. Now another big difference is I made the blend here. I turned down the blend to 0.75 and then that's going to make it a little bit flatter, so I increase the uh, cutoff 10 cents to 0.1. And then with filter 2, I turned off the key tracking entirely, and then I match the cutoff of this filter with the cutoff of this bump here in the EQ. And in order to do that, you can set the uh, unit here for frequency to hertz instead of uh, semitones in the advanced tab. Um, so I set this to 700 hertz, and then same thing with this one. And then I used a macro here uh, to edit that resonance. So I can move that resonance up and down and kind of make uh, the resonance of the guitar body um, higher or lower, 
to kind of make it sound like it's coming from a bigger guitar or a smaller guitar. Another way you could do that is instead of doing that in vital, you could run this uh, through some convolution reverb. And if you can find an impulse response uh, from a small resonating chamber like a guitar body, um, you could emulate it that way as well. Uh, anyways, some other differences. I added in uh, this filter here just to cut out some of the highs. It's being controlled by an envelope. Just be aware that if you're doing this, uh, the filter is applying to all the sound going into the effects section. So it's not going to apply to each note individually. Um, like if I turn on key tracking, it's still going to apply to every note the same way. Anyways, I also have the, I still have the soft clip here, but I set it to 2 dB instead of, I think it was 5 on the last one. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I used a little bit more um, randomness from this point cycle LFO. It's transposing the sample a little bit, just to get a little bit uh, different tamper, uh, timbre. And then the random here is doing the same thing. So it's... Uh, randomly transposing the sample a little bit here as well because I'm not using uh, the randomizer here probably because this is a sample of a real world sound and it's a little less consistent um, than like the white noise or the pink noise so anyways uh, that's pretty much it I hope this inspires some unique string instrument creations I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching